Thank you for waiting patiently. We uh, decided to start late because of uh, some uh, road closures around the museum. Um, so anyhow, my name is uh, Cheng Sim Lim. I'm the artistic director of the China On Screen Biennial. And on behalf of all our COB colleagues and partners, welcome to the closing night of the COB in Los Angeles. In about an hour from now, actually, the COB in Washington, D.C. will also be wrapping up with a film that LA audiences got to see a few weeks ago, An Elephant Sitting Still. And the news came out uh, today, I think, that the film uh, won Best uh, Film at the um, Taiwan Golden Horse. Yeah, it's an amazing film. Uh, it's actually been about a month since we kicked off um, this year's uh, COB edition. Um, thank yous are in order for a number of key people who have worked very hard through this month of COB events and many months prior to that. The UCLA Confucius Institute office is where the COB project starts and ends. So please give a warm hand of appreciation to the director and assistant director of the UCLA Confucius Institute, Susan Patel-Jane and Sang Hong Lin Takun. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow curatorial team members, CalArts faculty member, Bernice Reno, UCLA Film and Television Archive programmer, Paul Malcolm, and the film curator at the Freer and Sackler Galleries, Tom Vick. Without their contributions, the COB would be a far less interesting affair. Their intellect, knowledge, artistic curiosity, seriousness, care and generosity have shaped the COB programming from the beginning. And uh, now I'd like to ask you to give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Those of you who have come to the COB screenings the past few weeks know that we have been playing short videos in the wait time before the feature presentations. These videos are part of the Donghuang projected sidebar of the COB, created by artists we have invited to reflect on the Buddhist cave art at Donghuang, the UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Gobi Desert in northwestern China that was for a millennium from the years 400 to 1400, an important crossroads of the Silk Road. And uh, we've asked these artists to consider the resonances of the Buddhist art at uh, Donghuang uh, in our global present. So today's pre-show videos uh, that you saw are Root of Desire by Chai Chawei and The Raft, The Snake, and The Cosmos by narrative artist and animator Erin Cosgrove. Erin is here with us tonight. Erin, could you stand up and take a bow? The other Donghuang projected artist who is here with us tonight is sound artist Enoch Demers. Enoch will be mixing in real time the sounds in this theater, including everything that is said on stage, into a sound mandala that will be played back at the end of the program. I invite you to stay for a few minutes in the theater after the Q&A uh, to hear Enoch's response to the film Baby and his consideration of the space of the movie theater as a modern day Donghuang cave. So you can find out more about the works by Erin, Chawei, Enoch, and the other Donghuang projected commission artists on the COB website, chinaonscreen.org. So moving on to our closing night feature presentation, I'd like to express our deep gratitude to the UCLA Film and Television Archive for being a mothership for the COB. The archive has been a COB home since the first edition in 2012, and we look forward to continuing this partnership into the future. I'm pleased as well to announce that we have a newly added program partner for tonight's US premiere of Baby, and that is the Los Angeles Chinese Film Festival, or the LACFF for short. The LACFF is dedicated to uncovering and promoting outstanding Chinese language and Chinese culture focused films. Earlier this month, the festival completed its successful second iteration. We are happy for the LACFF's support in bringing the best of Chinese cinema to global audiences. Last and certainly not least, we are very honored to have the director of the closing night film, Baby, with us 
also. Director Liu Jie is a graduate of the cinematography department of the Beijing Film Academy. He started his filmmaking career in the early 1990s as a cinematographer on director Wang Xiaoshui's first feature, which is also one of the landmark films in the of the Chinese uh, independent film movement. And the title of that film is The Days. Wang Xiaoshui tapped Liu Jie to be his cinematographer again in 2001 for his Berlin Award winner, Beijing Bicycle. After that, Mr. Liu made the switch to directing. He has since made seven feature films as a director, starting with the 2006 dramedy Courthouse on Horseback. Courthouse won the Arizonti Award at Venice, and we're proud to say it was screened at the archive in a precursor series to the COB uh, in cooperation with Bernice Reynaud at Red Cat. And director Liu's next film, Judge, from 2009, reprises Courthouse's legal drama but relocates the action to the city. Mr. Liu would return again to the Yunnan countryside of Courthouse in two later films, Deep in the Clouds from 2010 and Thelan from 2016. Thelan was a selection of the last a COB in 2016. And in between the latter Yunnan set films, Mr. Liu directed the critically praised high school drama Young Style and a remake of the South Korean thriller Hide and Seek. The through line in all of these films, no matter their locale or ostensible genre, is Mr. Liu's probing of ethics and social relations, especially the fault lines between those who have relative power and those subjected to it. That through line continues into his remarkable new film that you're about to see, Baby, and it features the popular Chinese uh, star, Yang Mi. So please help me now to welcome director Liu Jie. <laughs> and uh, Peter Haochen will be translating for uh, Mr. Liu. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, 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 I'm very happy to come to UCLA. Uh, because this is, uh, I think, because the choices are all of my friends for a long time, especially Bernice. I'm very happy to be here at UCLA. All the curators are my, are my old friends, especially Bernice. Uh, 呃，所以很很高兴能够呃电影第一次这是在美国放映。Yeah, so I'm happy to premiere my film here in America. 啊，也我也很期待能够映后跟大家交流。谢谢。Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking with the audience after the screening. Thank you. So yes, uh, Director Liu Jie will be uh, back here uh, for a Q&A after the screening. And uh, this uh, Q&A will be moderated by uh, archive programmer Paul Malcolm. Uh, so please stay for that. And we will segue um, after the Q&A to Enoch's Sound Mandala. And then everyone in the, is invited to end the evening with a reception in the Nimoy studio, which you will see to your right when you exit the theater. So we will start the screening now. So please switch off all your mobile devices and enjoy baby. Well, thank you for joining us here and for allowing us to screen this such a phenomenal film. My understanding is that there was a very long research process that you went through um, in the making of the film, researching the foster system, the foster child system in China, interviewing people who would foster children, but also um, persons with disabilities, but that the original sort of motivation or the original sort of um, spark that compelled you to tell this story was something that happened to a friend of yours. Could you talk about that experience, that original sort of true life experience that compelled you to um, write this story, um, how you experienced it and, and why it sort of drove you to tell this story? Mm. 
呃，其实零九零九年的时候，我身边的一个朋友，呃，他生了这样的一个一个小孩就是很严重的先天的疾患。然后他的呃，医生跟他说，说他有三天的时间来考虑是不是放弃。然后他就他在那三天的时间里很痛苦，呃，他那个在第三天的时候有跟我聊天。And back in 2009, I had a friend who gave birth to a child with birth defect, and the doctor gave them three days to consider, and they had a pain for three days. And at the end of the three days,、um, we had a discussion. Ah, because in this before, I never knew that there would be such a problem. Ah, and then I think that the doctor gave them three days to consider, and they had a pain for three days. Ah, and then I think that the doctor gave them three days to consider, and they had a pain for three days. Ah, and then I think that the doctor gave them three days to consider. 但是，呃，现在有有差不多十年过去了，呃，他也付出了非常惨痛的代价。嗯。Before I didn't know issue like like this existed, and、um, after a painful decision, they decided to let the child live, and it's been ten years since then, and they have sacrificed a lot. 呃，也就是在那一年，零九年的年底的时候，我在北京的呃最南边的一个村子，靠近河北省的一个地方，呃，那那块我看到了有很多的呃，就是被遗弃的小孩他们被寄养在那个村子的村民家，在当时那个村子有六百户人家，当时在零九年的时候养了一千两百多个孩子。And um, toward the end of the year, I Um, I visited a village at the suburban area of、um, Beijing,、uh, in the Henan province, and、uh, in Hebei province. And then there was a village in which、um, there's all these abandoned kids living in foster family. And in the village of 600 family, there were 1,200、um, abandoned child living in foster care. 嗯，所以我我我只是我觉得是我们都不知道而已。呃，后来我。呃，查到了有政府的数据，呃，其实这个群体是非常巨大的，呃，就是在一二年和一零年的有两个有两份呢，呃，就是一个一个政府的报告里的，呃，我们能知道呢，就是每年大概这个出生缺陷的孩子有超过一百万人。And um, it was a statistic that we rarely know. And、uh, according to a governmental report back in 2012, each year there were around a million children、uh, were given birth to with birth defects. 呃，其中有百分之三十在出生前后就死掉了。然后我们也从政府报告里能够知道一个，就是政府说的保守的数字，呃，每年大约有十万个呃孩子被遗弃。其中，其中大部分都是残疾的孩子。And、uh, according to the government report, around 30% of childs of children,、um, in fact, died around the time,、uh, around the time of birth. And then、um, there's also a, a hundred thousand、um, ch uh, children. Uh, 十万的孩子。呃，十万的孩子被遗弃。每年。And every year, around a、uh, hundred thousand children get abandoned. You did a lot of this research. You know, you read these government reports and、um, interviewed people、uh, who've had this experience or foster children. But in the end, all of this sort of documentary research was in the the goal of creating a fictional film.、Um, Where do you? And of course, your your work is known for sort of focusing on sort of social and political issues. I'm I'm curious to know you why or or、um, you choose to focus on fiction and what role fiction can play in I guess changing people's minds or affecting these certain political issues where documentary can't. Or is that just where your sensibility lies more with the fictional than the documentary? How do you see those two fiction and documentary sort of relating in your work and in your preparation?
。呃，其实呃，呃，这个东西对于我来说的话呢，呃，我以前呃，凡是这些，包括马背上的法庭啊，呃，还有那个透析，呃，就是都是呃，用一个纪录片的标准。呃，我我其实是把它当成个纪录片在拍，嗯，一个故事片啊。I'm using the standard of documentary and the perspective of, doc,、uh, of documentary to make my fictional film, including my past film like、um, a courthouse on horseback. 嗯，所以呢，就是呃，就是看似它是一个故事片，它是呃虚构的这个故事，但是呢，呃，就是。呃，所有的细节，所有的不同的，包括呢，你在这电影里能够看到呢，呃，所有人们的反应，医院的反应啊，警察的反应啊，呃呃，福利院的反应啊，呃，所有的这些的细节，呃呃，都是我自己要求，就是他要非常的真实。Even though the film is a fictional narrative. But all the people's reaction and all the details in all the locations in the film, including the the police station, the hospital, and the welfare institution, are all very true. And then I use the standard of truth to apply to making this film. But have you ever thought about making? Would you ever have thought about making a documentary about this issue as opposed to a fictional film? 嗯，对对，我我因为一直没拍过纪录片啊，但是嗯、呃，可能就是因为呃，自己拍这样的东西呢，就是有点像一个纪录片的那种，嗯、呃，在去做呃调查研究，在做功课，所以其实整个这个过程呢，看起来更像是一个纪录片的创作。就比方说这个电影呢，除了这三个主要的演员之外呢，呃，其他的演员基本上都是真实身份，啊、呃，就是警察是警察，那个福利院的院长就是做这个工作的。嗯、um, ，I personally haven't done any documentary work, but then、uh, the preparation work for this film. Is that is in fact not unlike the preparation for a documentary,、mm -hmm. in the way I research, and、um, aside from the three main actors in the film,、mm -hmm. the rest of the people are non-professional actor acting as himself.、Mm -hmm. For example, the policeman was actually working as a policeman. Speaking about、um, the cast and performances, it seems that for a film with such a powerful sense of realism,、um, which is very much documentary-like. Um, the presence of a big celebrity, somebody who's known off-screen for their glamour and on-screen for their sort of like incredible, sort of like highly produced artifice, could be very disruptive to a film like this. But、um, Young Mi gives this amazing performance. I mean, she's almost unrecognizable, and it's just such a grounded and such a driving performance. How did you? How did she? Become a part of this project, and how did you work with her to create this performance? That this incredible performance. Because other people are real people, so because he is an actor, and he is very smart, he is very smart. But when he comes into this environment, I tell him that he is a very real person. Because he is very smart, he is very real. Uh, as a professional actress, Yang Mi has a very tight schedule. So when she came on the project, I told her that this would be a great challenge for you, because since the rest of non-professional actors、uh, will come out as real in the film, but if you come out as unreal, it will become a, quite a jarring experience. 对，然后所以她做了很长时间的功课。
，就是他去呃去去怎么样能够像那个像当地的人一样的，他去慢慢的去去去去找那个生活的质感。So she did a lot of preparation, including a lot of research into the texture of so-called texture of living of、um, of the people here. 对，但是呃，就是呃，我自己觉得呢，就是因为我呃以前基本上没有看过，我是没看过他以前演的别的戏的。啊、嗯，我最早见到他的时候，我觉得他是一个瘦弱的、倔强的小姑娘。我觉得他符合这个角色，但是呢，就是当这个电影在中国放映的时候，其实很多的还是很多的观众可能会觉得，觉得他们可能对杨幂有成见吧，嗯，对，但是反正那个。但是每次在海外放映的时候，或者是碰到不熟悉他的人的时候，呃，大家都觉得啊、哦，他不错。So I haven't seen her past work personally,、okay. Okay. Um, but when I first met her, she came up as a,、um, rev, have a she have a relatively weak and thin physique, but also have a stubborn personality,、mm -hmm. which I thought fitted the role. And、um, and when the film was screening、uh, domestically in China, and、um, people knew her star power, so people might have felt that that jarring experience. But when the film was screening abroad. Or for an audience who didn't know about her, and、uh, people praise her performance. That's quite an amazing performance. I also read that you had sort of treated her a little differently on set than she might have normally been used to treating her. Like she wasn't allowed to have an entourage or security guards, or she was just sort of treated like every other cast member, which is not normally how she's treated on bigger productions. Is that was that the case? 嗯，是的，啊、oh, yeah, ，对，是，对我对演员一直都挺狠的，嗯。Yeah. I've always been harsh on my actors. Um, some of the other performances that are really amazing in this film are the father of the child, the baby, um, which really we're so we're so connected to Young Mi's Young Mi's character's position, and then we're suddenly confronted with the father's position. And there's so many other sort of moments in the film where our empathies get confused and turned around. And I read in another interview that you gave that you're not so much interested in presenting a, a specific political or social agenda in the films or point of view, but rather expressing confusion. And I feel like that's what we get in this film. We're presented with so many different perspectives on what to do and how to do it. Can you expand a little bit on that idea about how you express confusion around these social issues in terms of the preparation of the script and your discussion with your actors and just how you go about creating that sense of confusion, capturing it? 呃，其其实我觉得这就是我个人的困惑，嗯，那个，因为呃，就是其实包括呢，呃，就是呃，其实这个电影跟我以前的电影呢，我自己觉得呢，可能说明性的东西有点多。啊，但是呢，这个我其实没办法，因为我后来呢，就是我发现呢，就是好像很多人就是对于他中间的事情是不太看得明白。其实包括那个就是很多的中国人，呃，就是呃，其实很多的那个呃一个中国大陆的观众，我跟他们聊起这些事儿的时候，他们都不太看得明白，因为他们对这个群体、对这个事情，呃，真的是。
不是很清楚，因为呢，呃，在以前的时候呢，可能政府不希望就是这些事情被说出来或者被被报道，啊、呃，大家都不太知道这样的事情，啊、呃，还有一个呢，就是说，呃，我其实也是在呃在所有的这个采访的过程中，我也想找到这个问题的方法，就是解决到底是因为什么。啊，但是实际上后来我发现我，我我根本找不到这个问题。啊，那我觉得，那当然有那种就是，呃，有这种社会保障、福利啊，或者是医疗的问题。啊，但是呢，就是我后来又得知了一个数字是什么呢？就是，呃，那当然呢，就是呃，中国这些年已经开始小孩是有那种医疗保险的。啊，那那那是不是丢孩子的人会越来越少呢？不是，现在数量是越来越多。啊，所以这个这些东西都让我让我让我想不明白，我不知道就是呃就是到底它的原因在哪儿。So the confusion you saw in the film is also my personal conundrum while making the film, and um, on one hand. Uh, comparing to my past film, this film has a lot more explanation and exposition. And part of the reason why is that the audience, audience in China, don't were not familiar with this issue, partially because the government probably did not want to kind of promote this kind of issue, so they're unfamiliar with the issue. So I have to do more exposition. On the other hand, uh, I also underwent a personal personal journey to kind of pinpoint the root cause. And the resolution of the issue I was presenting in the film, but I found myself unable to do so. And um, one of the conundrum, what a social conundrum, was that as the social welfare and healthcare progresses in China, and more children start to actually be covered um, with insurance, but you would expect that more、uh, less children will get abandoned. But in, in fact, the figure has been increasing. So、um, I personally cannot pinpoint、um, the root cause either. 我想这也有可能是文化的原因，是传统的原因。呃，因为我想呢，可能就是呃，中国人有中国人的一种观念呢，就是养儿防老。啊，就是当中国人养一个小孩的时候呢，他其实是希望，呃，这个孩子呢要聪明，要健康，一定要在自己老了的时候有能力来照顾自己。所以呢，对他们来说的话呢，可能呢，呃，一个残疾的孩子，一个就是可能就是就是毕生都需要我去照顾他的这样的一个孩子，可能会对他们是一种压力和困扰。And perhaps this is also about、um, cultural norms for Chinese family.、Uh, for most of them, raising a child is a sort of a retirement plan. You expect the child to be a healthy and smart individual who can take care of you when you're old.、Um, for them, having a children、uh, a child with disability who need to be cared for, as opposed to someone who can care for the parents, would be a disadvantage. 所以那些每年丢掉的那么多的、丢弃的那么多的那个残疾的孩子，呃，几乎没有被那个就是非非亲家庭收那收养的，所以才会有了一个可能政府没办法，才会有了一个寄养政策。嗯，嗯 ，That's also why、um, orphans with disability were rarely adopted by other family. And、thus, they have to go into foster care、uh, in a government-sponsored program. So, I also have the experience because I was in Toronto and in San Sebastian. So, I feel that outsiders are more likely to be on the side of the mother of the child. But, 交流的时候，我感觉更多的人都都会站在这个孩子的父亲一边，他们会觉得这个女孩子多管闲事儿，他们觉得
这个权利应该。这个孩子的生死的权利是应该是那个家庭的，是那个父亲的，啊，因为他们也会很很有理由的说，那那这不是你的，你你你你又不去负担着要一辈子去养活他。Mm -hmm. So when the film was screened abroad, for example in Toronto and Saint Sebastian, Saint Sebastian,、uh, audience mostly identify with the protagonist and. The child and the baby,、um, but when I screen the film in China, the audience, in fact,、uh, mostly identified with the father.、Uh, most of them think that、um, the protagonist was meddling in something that's none of her business, and the father had the right to decide the fate of the child. And、um, most audience also think that,、uh, also question uh, if uh, the protagonist, Yang Mi. Uh, uh, wasn't gonna take care of the child for the rest of her,、uh, rest of its life.、Uh, why should she be meddling with other people's business? I have a couple more questions, and I'll turn it over to the audience.、Um, I was. It's、uh, another major figure in film. Well, I mean, just film history. That's in this film is Ho Xiao Shan is an executive producer on the film, Taiwanese director,、um, uh, you know, certified master.、Um, how did he become involved in this project, and what was it like working、um, with him? Was this the first time you would work with him, and what was it like working with him? Ho Xiao Shan, this time, came to work with him. How did he become involved in this project, and what was it like working with him? Ho Xiao Shan, this time, came to work with him. 嗯、呃，我我当然那个呃，在两千年，两千年的时候，我就认识他的团队的主要的人成员，因为那时候，呃，北京 Bicycle 的那个剪辑师和录音师都是都是跟侯导经常一起合作的。然后后来那个零九年，呃，他在做《聂隐娘》的时候。呃，他实际上呢，那时候在大陆的所有的拍摄的这个，这个应该我认为应该叫叫执行制片的这个工作都是我做的，啊，所以呢，就是就是就是，比方说，包括呢，我的那个有一电影叫《青春派》，侯导在里头还有客串演过戏，那就是因为呢，我在拍那个片子的时候呢。嗯，侯导在北京来跟我开会，然后讨论聂隐娘的事儿。然后那天我正好不知道要拍什么，我说那侯导我拍一下你吧，然后就拍了侯导。啊，然后后来呢，就是聂隐娘最后呢，呃，上字幕的时候呢，呃，我说、呃、那个就是他们要给我非要给我上个字幕，我说你就上一个大陆的制片就行了。他呃，侯导说不行，你是个导演。说你必须得上监制，啊，所以后来我就说，我说我怎么敢给你当监制？他说没关系啊，那我也给你当监制。<笑> so I、uh, knew Ho Xiao Xian's team、uh, very well, and one of my our past、um, cooperation was back in 2000 when、uh, I was making Beijing Bicycle. And then、uh, I knew, actually knew his team pretty well, and、um, both the editor and the sound person were from Ho Xiao Xian's team、uh, on Beijing Bicycle. And then、uh, fast forward to the assassin, I was actually、um, doing most of the work associated with an executive producer in mainland China for the film Assassin, which is directed by Ho Xiao Xian, and、um, and then. In fact, Ho Xiao Xian had a cameo in my film, Young Style, and、um, he was in fact visiting the mainland to discuss、um, matters associated with Assassin. And then on that day, we didn't have any shooting schedule, so I just asked him to do a cameo in the Young Style. And、um, and in the end, after all the work I've done for the Assassin,、um, Ho Xiao Xian insisted. That I be accredited as a producer,、mm. even though I would have been pretty happy with、uh, just like a mainland producer, but instead he credited me as an executive pr producer. And then、um, I said to him,、um, actually he said he offered to be a producer on my film to to、uh, return the favor 
so that's how it came to be. So um, last question, I hope it's not too big or abstract a question, but um, do you think that film in China or elsewhere, especially acknowledging that maybe Chinese audiences had different responses to this film than say, you know, foreign language audiences had, do you think that film uh, or what role can film play in changing social policies or um, political, you know, situations. Do you think film has a role to play and can it play that role in, in China? Uh, 以前呢，就是我们总是我们总是讲呢，可能就是在中国有时候电影是一个宣传的工具。当然现在呢，就是市场化了之后呢，我还是觉得呃需要有一些人用现实主义的呃的的态度去去关心社会吧。嗯。
因为一旦给了台词之后，他一背台词，这个事情就又假了。呃、uh, ，the second, secondly, you cannot feed them lines. Once you feed them line, um, their performance becomes fake. 啊、uh, ，所以呢，就是比方说那个警察的那个所有的戏，其实他也是编剧之一。Um, so because the policeman、uh, improvised some of his lines, he it's almost the case that he could be credited as a screenwriter. 对，所以那些那些就是呃，比方说呢，呃，接到报案、出警，碰到这样的问题，该怎么处理？程序上是否合法？就是你会这样做吗？这些事儿其实都是，其实那个警察告诉我的。So for every steps of the police procedures, including receiving a report and dispatching the car and then dealing with the case,、um, all that kind of that chain of event were all taught to me by the policeman. 嗯，所以就是我们每当要找一个角色的时候，我们就找一个生活中真实的这个角色。然后我去找这些人，比方说我去去一群警察里头，我看哪个警察呢，就是呃完全不怕摄影机，能够呃很轻松的做自己就可以了。Yeah. So whenever I have a role to fit, I would go out to find the right person in the in the actual role. For example, for the policeman, I went to find. Um, uh, many policemen actually, and see which which of them feel most comfortable in front of the camera. 嗯，我会给侯导看剧本，然后呢，呃，就是呃，剪辑版本他也看过，但是呃，就是侯导其实是侯导是一个非常坚决的认为电影就是就是就是就是导演的事情。所以，如果你要是你问他意见的话呢，他，他，他不会给你具体的意见，因为他觉得那是导演的事儿，所以他就会。但是呢，他如果有什么感触或者他有点想说的呢，他就会可能就就会怎么讲呢？就会非常形而上的，就绕着圈儿的，就可能就就在谈别的，然后你去体会。And、uh, Hou Xiaoxian read the script, also watched the many version of my draft cuts.、Um, but he believed in a tourism where the director is in charge of filmmaking, so he doesn't give specific or concrete advice.、Um, but he does offer his own personal reflection and thoughts, which sort of、um, kind of went off on its own and not necessarily related to film anymore. Question from the audience. Let's go over here on this side here. <coughs> you, right there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 导演您好，我有一个关于角色设计的问题，就是我注意到这个角色他说话的时候有一点点的粗鲁，就是他没有。他从来没有说过什么“你好啊，打扰一下”这种，所以刚开始的时候观感体验我有一点不舒服。但是因为您又是编剧又是导演，我想问一下您，就是这个选择是您作为一个编剧的，嗯，有就是特地的选择，还是说这个演员也参与了这个选择？你是说杨幂吗、嗯？对，就是就是他、啊、他这种表现的方法，啊、您。他他这种把这个稍微有一点粗鲁的这种表现方法，是不是嗯、呃，您在剧本里就写，就是台词里面就是从来没有说过“你好啊”这些东西？嗯嗯 ，So I can translate. So I have a question about the character design. To be honest, at the beginning, I felt a little bit uncomfortable about this character's performance because she never said hello, excuse me, or anything like that. I thought she was kind of rude. And my question is,、um, did you decide on that consciously as a screenwriter and the director, or did the actress also、um, make a decision on that? Thank you. 嗯，呃，因为一开始设计这个角色的时候是呃，嗯、呃，一开始在在在在设计这个角色的时候，我其实就遇到了一个很大的问题，就是呃。因为那时候我不停的讲给身边的朋友听
啊，但是呢，呃，身边的朋友呢都不相信，说一个女孩子会去管别人家的事儿，啊，就这点来说的话呢，我我我真的觉得，觉得就是呃，我我对我来说蛮困扰的。啊，因为我觉得呢，就是呃，我我在想呢，如果我碰到这样的情况的话，我也许会去管这别人的事儿。So I face a big challenge, uh, in my character design, and as I retold the story to friends around me, and none of them find it believable, find it believable that a young woman would try to meddle in other people's business, um. This is hard for me because I personally would meddle in other people's business in her place. Um, yeah, so this is a big problem for me. So, 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 um, almost in an effort to convince my friends who were giving feedback to me, um, I, I kind of ponder on the idea that what if the, the young woman was not cl a clever woman, or if she um, has some sort of has a disadvantage intellectually, would it become more believable? 嗯，因为呢，我们拍摄的时候呢是没有完整的剧本的，是用一个五页纸的一个提纲在拍摄。嗯、um, ，We didn't actually follow any formal script while shooting a film. We, in fact, the only thing we had was a five-page、uh, outline. 所以也是一边拍吧，一边在调整。然后呢，我我想了想，我也。没有勇气告诉杨幂说呢，你演的是一个智力有问题的孩子。Um, so we adjusted while shooting, and I did not have the courage to explicitly say to Yang Mi that her character was mentally challenged. 所以呢，我们就没有在一开始的时候就是把这事说明白，但是中间埋的那些。有有好多的细节点，其实都在暗示他智力有问题。So we did not explicitly make that clear in the film, but、um, there are many details、um, hiding in the film that points to the fact that she might be mentally challenged. 比方说，那个哑巴第一次，呃，哑巴哑巴在那个第一次出现的哑巴的第二场里头，哑巴开着车跟他说：“说你要去，你要去办个残疾证。”然后呢，他说不去。那人家那哑巴告诉他说呢：“说有的人装傻去办。”那其实那意思就是说，你真傻，干嘛不去办、so, um, ？One of the hint was the conversation. With Xiao Jun,、uh, her friend,、uh, where Xiao Jun urged her to get a certificate of disability,、mm -hmm. and、um, telling her an anecdote where one of the normal person、um, kind of perform、uh, mental disability in order to get a cert certificate. So the subtext there was that、uh, why don't you, who in fact have、uh, mental disability, to get a certificate? 嗯，所以后来审片的时候呢，因为在中国审片的话，会得经过那个民政部门跟福利部门的人来来审这个片子。那个他们审片的时候，他们一眼就知道说，哎，这杨幂是演的这个是这个智力有问题的孩子，因为他们有这个经验，因为那个就是外表看着健全的一个孩子，能去申请残疾证的理由只有两个，要不就是智力的，要不就是精神的。So,、um, so while the film was going through a censorship system in China, it went through the civil ministry and、um, welfare, social welfare institutions, and the staff there recognized、uh, immediately that、uh, the protagonist was mentally challenged because they were they knew the system very well. They knew that in order to get a certificate of disability 
who are having a seemingly able body in China. There are only two ways. First is if you have um, mental illness, and then it's the mental disability. 嗯，虽然是想起来也是挺挺悲剧的，好像是智力没问题的中国人是不会去管这个闲事儿的。And um, in fact, the story sounds very tragic. It's as if pointing to the fact that if you weren't mentally challenged, you were not going to meddle uh, for causes that you believe in in China. I want to sort of steal a question back and just ask about character design, but in relation to her friend, her, her deaf friend, who both sort of tells her what she's doing is wrong, but then also allows her to facilitate you know, her plan, at one point driving her to the hospital to kidnap the baby. But I was also particularly, um, one of my favorite scenes in the film is when they're having, she's having dinner with him and her and his deaf friends, and they're all around the table together. Like in, in in just one of the briefest, shortest scenes in the film, you just get this really strong sense of just how warm and caring and strong this community of, of people are who have been otherwise sort of shut out of mainstream society. And we're just at that dinner table like for just a few minutes. Can you talk a little bit about, well, I guess this is two questions, how her friend, the deaf friend's character developed um, in this process of, you know, when you were working without a script, but also the shooting of that scene and how that scene sort of came about because it's such an amazing moment in the film. Chicago 但是后来我发现那个小孩但是呢，他是一个台湾的演员，他有非常重的那个台湾的口音，我就受不了，所以我才我才让他演的是哑巴。So the character design, in fact, shifted as we shot the film. Originally, the character of Xiao Jun was performed by um, someone who actually had a mobile disability. Um, a bit toward the end, I, the film was almost finished, and I thought that he really could not be himself in front of the camera. Um, so I changed actor and hired Li Hongqi, who is a Taiwanese actor. And because he has a very thick Taiwanese accent, which I really could not stand, so I made him into a shape, shape him into a deaf character. Okay. Very practical decision then on that point. <laughs> But the but but that but that scene of the of him and the other his other you know friends who are also deaf I mean it's so real it feels so human that that moment and it's. 嗯，对，因为那里头除了他们俩人之外，剩下的都是都是真的聋哑人。So uh, aside from those two actors, the rest of the people uh, were actually um, deaf. So we have time for one more question. Sorry about that. So let's go right here in the, um, I guess, uh, yeah, right there in the back. Hi, um, so I just have a few couple of questions. So at the first one, I, speaking of accent, I'm really um, interested in the accent of young me because she's, you, um, you talk, you direct her to speak an accent which is not 
um, the standardized Mandarin, rather it's a dialect. And I wonder why did you do that? And because sometimes when she's speaking, I just feel kind of weird or un un unnatural because sometimes she just always switch back to um, the standardized Mandarin. And um, as for the second question, I noticed that in the beginning of the film that uh, the film is a little bit over exposed. And I wonder why did you do that? And you use a little available light a lot. And um, are you trying to um, eliminate a sense of reality through the available over exposed light? And as for the third question, and I'm- I think we're gonna have to just give you those <laughs> okay, two, okay. sorry. It's okay, and um, so just okay. I'm gonna translate to you. Do you mind? Huh. Just uh, the um, uh, maybe, 不好意思。就第一个问题，就是想问一下，因为在那你那个影片中，台湾不是那个杨幂，她说的口音不是就是正啊、呃、正宗的那个中国的普通话的那个口音，那嗯嗯。呃呃就他是说的是个方言，但是他在说方言的时候，他的那个就是他有时候又会很不自然的，就是去又说回很呃标准化的普通话的口音。然后我想问一下，就是为什么一定要让他说方言，而不能是一些普通话？因为现在的很多的中国的年轻人，他们都他们都是在说那个普通话 ，rather than 呃。方方言，然后第二个问题是我发现你在影片刚开始的时候，它是有一些时间是过曝的。那我想问一下，你这种过曝的处理是不是是想去呃去去去呃 capture 呃想去就是去。捕捉一种现实，或者是想去让它，就是更加的 documentary like， 更加的实验，呃，纪录片式的那种感觉。谢谢。那我知道，知道啊，呃，那个呃呃，因为是这样，我觉得还是一个导演的感受，因为呢，如果要是在现场让杨幂讲她的那个标志性的北京话的话，我会受不了的。我我我是我接受不了，我不相信他是那样的，所以呢，其实这个事情很很为难他，因为那个南京话真的很难学，特别难学，嗯，所以呢，他有的时候呢，可能呢有一些就是讲的不错，啊、嗯，但是有的时候可能急了之后呢，也会有一两句普通话给溜出来。但是呢，我我其实按道理说呢，就是后期配音的时候，如果我要是选择后期配音的话，是能把这个问题解决的。但是我又真的不想配，所以所以就就就可能有现现在这样的问题啊。It's due to my intervention as a filmmaker, and if Yang Mi was speaking very standard Beijing-style Mandarin Chinese in the film, I, this is something I could not stand, something I could not accept. Um, so I had to ask her to speak in dialect, which is something, which is something that's a lot to ask, because um, the Nan Nan Nanjing regional dialect is very hard, hard. So it's understandable that she sometimes switch back and forth, and this issue could have been solved by dubbing it in post, but I wasn't willing to do that. 那个关于第二个问题是是这样的，就是因为他本来那个就是其实我们拍摄的条件是嘛很好的，本来可以调的非常的精美，我们就是其实是往往往那个 documentary 方向去去调的。嗯、um, ，The lighting condition was in fact quite good, so we had a chance to adjust it into something that's better, but we decided to go for a more doc documentary style. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for a phenomenal film. Please linger here for a few minutes to hear The Sound Mandala by Anouk Demers, but then also join us at the reception, which is in the Nimoy uh, studio space, which is if you go out to the lobby, go right out the main doors, it'll be directly on your right. You'll see the, the, you'll see the space is open. So uh, thank you very much for coming. Director Leo, thank you very much for an amazing film. Thank you.
谢谢、呃、那个，对，很遗憾那个谁，呃，杨幂没，杨幂这次没法来，对，但是我会告诉他说，对我们在洛杉矶放映了，嗯。So unfortunately, Yang Ming herself cannot come here, but I will relay every all the discussion we had to her. 最后，最后，谢谢呃 U C L A， 谢谢孔子学院，谢谢各位啊。Yeah. Thank everyone from UCLA and Confucius Institute. <laughs>